Welcome to part two of Singapore's Crazy Rich Asian Food Tour. Last video, we got a taste of Singaporean street food, and today we're going to discover the rich traditional flavors of Singapore. This is why disco died. You kind of look like a slutty Ebola virus. It's like a bag of Skittles. Taste the rainbow. We're starting today at Quincy Hotel to dress the part with my glam squad. Dang, TJ, my grandma called. She wants a dress back. Give it to her grandma. Wow. Yeah. Oh, there you go. I'm forever 21. You know you're 26, right? Ah. Who's that? Who's that? Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Just a bit there. Just the hair, and I think you're almost there. A big thanks to Kevin Murphy Hair Care for hosting us in Singapore. Their blonde angel line keeps my dyed hair frizz free and fabulous in the Singapore heat. Now, to find my Nick, where are you at? We're starting today's food tour with Pranakan cuisine, food from descendants of early Chinese migrants who settled in Singapore. To begin the feast, a lovely performance. Now, Peranakan is a term that refers to Chinese communities that migrated to Southeast Asia back in the 19th century. And this intermarriage of the Chinese Straits and Malays created this beautiful culture where the ladies are called nanyas, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And the gentlemen are called babas. So the meal we are trying today is full of traditional Peranakan recipes passed down by the nanyas and babas generations after generations. This particular restaurant is owned by Chef Raymond and he has prepared for us a celebratory feast. Peranakan cuisine is known to be very, very rich, similar to how their entire culture is very rich and complex and beautiful. We're gonna get a taste of Singapore today, so let's dig in. The first item we are trying today is their satay. Now, usually when you think of satay, you think about it in sticks, but this version is actually cooked and is drenched with a ton of sauce. And I'm wondering what causes this beautiful red color right here. It's like reddish orange. It looks, it looks spicy, but we'll see. I believe this is pork and we got a big juicy piece right here. I've been to Indonesia before, so this flavor reminds me of a lot of the Indonesian like tamarind, ginger, they kind of mix into their cuisine. And in fact, Peranakan is kind of a mixture of Indonesian food, Chinese food, and Malaysian food. This piece of pork, super tender, like crazy, crazy tender. Also, not spicy at all, it's actually got a little bit of sweetness to it. This is a very, very special dish. This is the nasi goreng. So basically it's a fried rice. However, what's special about it is that this is actually not stir fried or pan fried or anything. So they have these thinly sliced herbs and I think there's about five different kinds in there. You can see the huge rings of lemongrass. You can see some green onion in there and they start tossing it up with room temperature rice. Because these herbs are very heat sensitive, as soon as it touches the rice, it kind of lightly cooks. This coloring on the rice is not actually because it's stir-fried. It's actually caused by the samba that they add in there. And in addition, inside there's also salted fish. Back in the days, their, their grandmas would start making this dish early in the afternoon because it requires so much, you know, thinly sliced up, requires so much preparation. And then for dinner, this would be the only dish because it took so long to prepare. If they're able to make this dish, it shows that they are very skilled in the kitchen and that they can cook. There's a lot of history and a lot that goes into this little bowl of rice. Oh, here we go. Look at all of that herby seasoning. Wow, it just woke me up. You immediately taste that blast of lemongrass and the more you chew into these herbs, the spicier it gets. And I actually see a lot of that salted fish in there that gives it this, the flavoring. Oh wow, that's a flavor blast. 
Mm -hmm. So, the chef specifically pointed out this particular dish. And he says this is the truffle of the East. And what it is, is some type of nut. And it's actually, in its raw form, poisonous. I know, and it goes through a whole process of fermenting, of clearing out volcanic ashes. This is what it looks like before. And you see all the processes they have to go through to get to its final form where we can eat it. Oh, wow. It's like paste in there. Check it out. Let's do this. Wow. That's got a crazy, intense flavor. If you guys have ever tried fermented tofu in those little cans, per fermented tofu paste, that's what this tastes like. Holy smokes, that is strong. Mm. This really is truffle of the East. It's got almost a medicinal flavor. You have to take it in small bites to really enjoy that powerful, aggressive taste. Texture-wise, it's like a grainy paste. Wow. Fascinating. This is such a this is such an incredible experience. I've never eaten anything like this. Thank you. Mm, yeah. This right here, I believe it is made of pork and shrimp. And what I love about it is this crispy outer layer. It's gonna be a nice crunch. Let's try this. See that? Wow. Oh my god. Mmm. Crispy outer layer, and inside it's like a pork and shrimp filling that is kind of grainy, and then some chewy parts from the parts of the meat. It's very good. That was very, oh my gosh. The flavor in all of these dishes is magnificent. So the rest of the items we haven't tried yet, I put it into my little platter. I'm gonna try it with some of this pea flour rice. And I think this is how you actually are supposed to eat it. Um, put everything onto your plate like this, like a little food sampler platter. This right here is the beef rendon. I hope I'm saying it right. It is cooked with spices and coconut milk. Okay, we're gonna get some of this blue pea flour rice. So just take a bite. Oh. Meat is super tender. It feels like it's been braced in that sauce for a while. You can taste so much of that coconut milk. It gives it a beautiful sweetness. It's delicious. This over here is the fish, and I've been informed that this kind of fish, the locals have grown up with. So let's try to get a bite of this. Oh, there we go. Awesome, look at that thick piece right there. Coat it in some samba. <laughs> it's spicy. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had a really scary experience with fish bone in Tainan. So I'm trying to chew this very soft. There's not much fish bone in there. I think there was just a little bit. This samba sauce that they cooked it with, holy smokes, it's very spicy, it's very chilly. It's totally different from the other items we just tried. It's got a, a beautiful kick. I love that. That is yummy. There's actually some bamboo pieces in here. It's gonna be super crunchy. And check out this meatball. What Wow. Melted apart. So I thought I was done with the meal and then they came out with this. <laughs> this giant dessert platter. Okay, so some fun fact. This right here, this beautiful, beautiful leaves. These are actually pandan leaves. Um, and if you guys ever had like Pandan pancake, pandan boba, pandan jelly. This is where it comes from. And they actually say, if you really want to smell that sweet um, flavor, you just get a little bit of leaf, you kind of crush it, and you'll smell that sweet pandan flavor. <sighs> get, get high on this. <laughs> okay guys, so this is rice flour pancake, and it's coated with this very thick, thick sauce and it, actually what it is is banana and they simmer it in low heat with some of that pandan so it's gonna be a sweet banana caramel sauce yes caramel put tomato tomatoes huh <laughs> they actually put a bunch of pea flour syrup on it and you see that they use pea flour in so many of the dishes for that blue coloring the pea flour seeps through the pancake so there should be a flour design all throughout the pancake oh I'm so excited it was so fluffy I'm gonna Drench it in this sauce, I like a saucy, and we're gonna take a bite. Ready? 
Oh wow. Holy smokes. Mmm. Okay, it's definitely got a stickier texture than regular pancake in this syrup right here. You get that pandan aroma and that beautiful sweet banana flavor. It's just so good. This right here, the blue is gelatinous sticky rice and of course, pea flower coloring to get that vibrant blue. And this on top is actually grated coconut with palm sugar. So palm sugar is the sap of coconuts. And I'm expecting a lot of sweetness from this. Kind of like a grady, uh, chewy texture. Ready? Wow. The dessert, they're amazing. That sticky rice actually has less of a chew than the pancake, and it kind of just melts away. Um, you can taste every grain of that rice. And that grated coconut, of course, got a little bit crunchiness to it. Sweet, delicious. This is their version of a pineapple cake. They call this a pineapple tot, like a tater tot. Look how tiny it is. And I think it's just one bite, but I kind of want to bite it and have to show you guys what's inside. Ready? Mmm. The inside is really, really sweet. Outside is super flaky. It really is like a top version of the pineapple cake that I'm familiar with in Taiwan. I love it. One bite deliciousness. Mmm. No good. Here we go. That was a super festive and traditional Peranakan meal here in Singapore. My goodness, that was so rich and so luxurious. There's so much flavor and so many different dishes. And the way it was presented, the attention to detail is just remarkable. If you guys are looking for a traditional and upscale cuisine experience, I really recommend this restaurant. I'll leave it in the description. Now we have one more stop to go to to show you a more luxurious side of the very beloved satay here. Let's go. Of course, the best way to start a meal is with a Singapore sling. This is an iconic Singapore drink. It's pink, it's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> it's very on brand. I believe there's some gin, some cherry liquor. I saw him pour in some soda water. I'm not too sure, but let's give it a taste. Oh, oh I love that. Nice and fruity, super refreshing. It's got a nice fizz to it. Drinks like these, you can chuck three, four, five. The next thing you know, you're somewhere on the streets of Singapore. Luckily, it's very clean. <laughs> you have a little alcohol in your system, let's move on to the food. So the satay here, there's actually a live satay bar. You can see them grilling the satay over a grill and the flame just covering it. It is so magnificent. So right here, I believe this is pork satay. We're gonna grab some of the sauce. Look how red that is. <laughs> I wonder if it's really spicy. Just dip it in. All right, let's get a real good scoop of sauce. Let's take a bite. Mm. Oh, wow. First of all, so much more meat than the Hawker Center satays. Very tender, and they glazed it with some kind of sauce that is so sweet and yet tangy. And along with this chili sauce right here, just a, honestly a flavor blast. This sauce is a lot spicier than the peanut sauce that we tasted at the Hawker Center. Mm. Oh my god. Nothing I love more than that slightly burnt crisp on the outside of these sticks. So good. Mm. So this item, I think it's a very classic appetizer here. You'll find it in a lot of Singaporean restaurants. It's a crispy outer layer inside their shredded radish. And we added a little bit of sweet sauce and a little bit of chili paste. So it's gonna be a sweet and sour taste. And I think you just eat it like a cup. like. Try this. Mm. Even without the sweet sauce, there's a little bit of sweetness already coming from the radish. The sweetness is definitely more overpowering than the savoriness, but it's quite it's quite a delicious snack. You just pop it in your mouth. The barramundi, it's a fish. And of course, when you're in Singapore, you have to try the seafood. And oh, I'm gonna actually lift the skin up and reveals, oh my gosh, look at that. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look at all that steam coming from the fish. It looks flaky. Wow. 
no bones. Thank goodness. My peeve about eating fish is always the little bones. Just got the beef rend in, it just kind of slid apart in my mouth. Mmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is tender, tender fish. This is honeycomb tripe. If you guys look at it, this has one of the most interesting texture because tripe is actually supposed to be really chewy. But the fact that they kind of grilled it here so you know it's gonna be a little bit crispy. We're gonna dip it in some of this peanut sauce. I believe this is a lemak coconut sauce. So we're gonna see. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Oh, it's got a lot to chew. Okay, you guys, if you take a bite of this, expect to be chewing it quite a lot. Now, this sauce is a lot more grainy. It's not spicy at all, so non-spicy fans rejoice. It's actually got very much of a, like a sweeter, lighter coconut flavor. Uh, but definitely you can taste that peanut sauce in there. If you guys are really into eating intestines from Asian food and having that chewiness from tripe, then you guys will really, really enjoy this because my gosh, was that a chew. I don't think you're gonna be able to find tripe like this sauteed on the street. This is definitely a restaurant experience. I really love the vibe of this restaurant. Okay, it's very hip, modern, but at the same time, there's an elegance to it. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. It's the part of the video. It must be the alcohol. It's the part of the video where I ask you guys which of the dishes we tried today, any of the dishes that you saw in this video, would you love to try if you visit Singapore? So what I'm gonna do now is finish the Singapore sling, maybe order four more, and then I'm gonna go find my Nick. You know, because I'm not trying to be a crazy poor Asian. Okay, bye! Cheers! <laughs> Am I recording? <laughs> okay, you guys. Ooh, this pandan is all up in my business. So this right here is... <laughs> Okay, on to the next.